in the bronze final between Action Metal Blue and the FH Polo team. So who do you like in this one, Jim? G'day, mate. How are you? Well, thank you. And yourself? You're already a liar, though, aren't you? Because you said I was your good mate. <laughs> um, I owe you still 10 bucks from last week, I think, don't I? With the interest, it's probably up to 25. Very amusing. Uh, yeah, no, look, I'm not going to pick anybody in this one, Andrew, but I'm happy if you want to pick one and we'll put tenner on it. Keep it interesting for us. Well, I'll, uh, being a New South Wales and Blues supporter, I'll take the Action Metal Blue team. You can have the FH team and the Action Metal Blue team, or both teams just having a bit of a discussion about how some of the game tactics that they want to run. And both teams uh, aren't quite as programmed. Both of them moved. The Action Metal Blue team, Graham Mann's wearing the number one shirt, Michael King in the number two shirt. Uh, Richie Curran is the, sit down the program to be number three, but he's actually got the uh, four on his back with the green helmet for the men in blue. And uh, that means Blake Reed is wearing the number three with the red helmet for the blue team. And the FH Polo team, Mike Roberts um, up the front in the number one shirt. Pete Hambry's actually gone from three to two. He's wearing the number two shirt. Sean Barnacle is wearing the number three shirt for the FH Polo team. And Bingham Fitzhenry is wearing the number four. So that's how they'll line up. If you haven't been to the Polo before, the number one should be out the front ready to score goals. The two should be helping score the goals, but also doing a bit of defensive work in the opposition number three. The ball's into the line out. They're all working hard. It looks to be Blake Reed's got control of it first under a bit of pressure from Bingham Fitzhenry. He's backed it around the corner from Richie Curran. He's had a bit of a check from the umpire's pony. Left there for Graham Mann. Mann tips it up there. No, it was, yes, it was Graham Mann. Left here now for Sean Barnacle. Sean now with a chance to turn it around the corner. Has it there, blocked up though by Graham Mann. Just conceding the play. <clears throat> now she hits away, looking for Pete Hambry. Hambry's hooked out of the play. Next one, two, it'll be Graham Mann, Richie Curran. Umpire's whistle will win the play. So penalty five awarded on the spot to the um, the Action Metal Blue team taken by Richie Carr and wanting a teammate to run order. That's what Blake Reed tries to do, but Pete Hanbury's read the play the best. Backs it out here to his... Bro sorry, it was Bingham to his brother. Pete Hanbury there, hooked out of the play. Now it's going to be... Blake Blake Reed's going to take it round the long way. Under the pony's neck, one play, two play. Graham Mann's pulled in behind him. Wanted someone to run for it. Mike King's tried to do that. It's been left behind there by the boys in blue. Sean Barnacle won't leave it behind. Richie Curran rides down the old right of way. Tries to get the right of way going, but here comes Sean. Sean up towards halfway. She's a strong rider. They don't want to let her go to goal on her own. Sean Barnacle up over the attacking 50. 100 metres out from goal now, 60. Going to be left there for Mike Roberts. Roberts shoots for goal, but he's left it behind. And Richie Curran now. Curran brings it round. He's under hard pressure here by Hanbury. Richie Curran needs someone down in front of him. Mike King's there if he can get it to him. And gets it out here nicely to Michael King. King will go over the halfway mark. He's 130 from goal. King, he now takes it down to the 50, 60 yard line. This is what he likes to do, Michael King. He likes to run it in towards goal. Here comes Bingham, Bingham Fitzhenry. Michael King's too good and puts it through for the first score of the day. Action Metal Blue, one goal to zero. All back into the line out now, so very good goal there, Action Metal and uh, of, uh, Michael King took the ball from the halfway line and threw the goal. So uh, just for your information, ladies and gentlemen, Polo's played uh, with uh, each player with a handicap um, and the handicaps range from minus two to ten um, and the minus two being of the lesser value than the 10, 10 being the, the highest rated, and there are only a handful of those in the world. So this is what we call a four goal um, uh, match. Uh, the 
addition of each of the players' handicaps is the total of the team handicap, so four. So both teams on four goals. So you will have players up there. I think the three-goal player, probably Bingham Fitzhenry is the highest rated out there, and uh, also Richie Curran's on three. So those guys you would sort of anticipate to be ruling the roost out there a little bit and hoping to organise the team. And that was a perfect example of, of some great teamwork where uh, Michael King was fed the ball. He was out on his own there, and, and even though he's a lesser handicapped player, he was able to take the ball down the field and, uh, and score the goal. Penalty awarded up here for uh, Action Metal, and it was on the 60-yard line, so that's a defended goal for Action Metal. Uh, that means the, uh, the goal is allowed to be defended from the 60-yard line. So anyway, very quickly, the players uh, changing and gaining new position. This is Blake Reed with the ball at the moment. Over the top he goes and left for the backhand shot and turning it around again. Action Metal. So keep an eye out always, ladies and gentlemen. We always tend to watch the guy that's on the ball, and we're always sort of looking at that and the write-offs. And there's an awful lot that happens off the ball. Write-offs and, uh, and players making, making uh, clear way for their teammates to come through by riding players out of the way. Watch also, we'll see some of the uh, the lower rated players that on some good horses that will be trying to ride the, uh, the, the higher handicap players out of the play. So you'd appreciate that a, uh, a player, say, with a minus one or a zero handicap that's taking care of a guy with that's on a three handicap, one of the higher rated players, that is effectively a, uh, a play that's made to the standard of the higher rated player. So very good value, if you like, within that particular in that play. So have a look at it. Every time the play gets underway, we create what we call the right of way, the line of the ball, and players are going to be looking for position, and away we go again. Lovely uh, shot through from Richie Curran. Bingham, it's not Bingham, I beg your pardon. And going back for the backhand shot and turning it around uh, FH Polo in the grey shirts. This is Bingham now with the ball. Hard press though, and it's still with Bingham Fitzhenry and around they come now. Not sure who this guy is. Long way away from me, but has a swing and has a miss. And it's still with Bingham. Now, have a look. See, Bingham's stopping and looking for the players. And the players are running. Bingham's going to take it himself, though. Nobody just with, a, with a enough clear space for Bingham to feel that confidence. With Bingham Fitzhenry now, taken away by, I think, Richie Curran makes the backhand shot, turns it around again for Action Metal. Picked up by Action Metal. I think this is Michael King again. On we go. Kingy with the ball. Hard ridden, though, this time by Sean Barnacle. And I think the whistle was blown. Did I hear a whistle? Might have been on the other field. That can happen. So the ball over the back line. And the score remains 1-0. We, oh, we do have a scoreboard over there. I hope it's a bit more effective than last week's, Andrew. So do I. I think they've even got the timer working this week. So the lovely June Gilmore over there taking care of the timekeeping and the scoring as she does for a lot of polo in Queensland these days. Done a fantastic job for many years. And you're watching Bingham Fitzhenry come off the back line. He can't pick up the bouncing ball. He's well as like left here for Sean Barnacle. She's trying to pick up a teammate. Great pass there from Sean to Pete Hanbury. Hanbury now looks down see if there's any defensive players coming. There's none so he can take his time to go. Takes a little half shot. The little black pony puts out towards the ear. Got the ears pointing forward. He's left out behind. Bingham Fitzhenry goes down on the near side though and he'll put it through. So a good team goal there as Jim was alluding to before. It's all about getting as much as you can out of all your teammates and that's what it was. Sean Barnacle started the play with a nice pass up to Pete Hanbury. He took it the majority of the way down the field and then the bouncing ball just wasn't kind enough. And he left the ball behind for Bingham to take the near side shot to one all in the first chucker. As Jim said, a four goal, four chucker game this one. So four time periods of seven to seven and a half minutes. First bell will sound after the seven minute mark. And then it'll be the next stoppage after that. If there's none occurred, a second bell will go. So you're watching Richie Curran drive it down here for for Blake Reed. Blake Reed's going to have to leave the next one over the top. Graham Mann will be the next one to it. His pony gives him a bit of a prop. He's left it. Uh, Sean there says, oh, the best, safest spot for this is over by the sideline. She bangs it into the boards, checks the pony, now waits for it. Tries to bring it round. Richie Curran concedes the play rather than giving away the penalty. Sean looks up to see where her teammates are. She's going to drive it up here for try to get on the peak, but Graham Mann's got the right off. No, he's going to concede the play rather than leaving it there, and the umpire's whistle goes. Right now, halfway, penalty five beast hit for the team. Or are they going to take it down to the husks? Might be a penalty four, a 60-yard defended penalty hit a goal. 
So the umpires have obviously deemed that the uh, attacking players would have taken the ball down to an attacking position, so they've given them a 60-yard defended penalty hit at goal. So the attacking team now, the FH Polo team, they'll get the ball 60 yards from goal. They've got a little while to tee it up. Uh, 60 yards from goal, dead centre, but the uh, Action Metal Blue team, they'll get to defend the goals. So you'll find themselves, place themselves not nearer to the ball than 30 yards, but between the, uh, between the goal posts. There and the FH team, they'll be just wide of the goalpost. So that if the attacking shot goes a little bit wide, they can direct it back in. See so out they come. Blake Reed here, Graham Mann. And you've got Michael King and Richie Curran back on just on the inside of the post to try and block the play. So Bingham fits Henry now. He's going to canter his pony around, have it collected. He just has a feel of the height. And he'll try and have the offside front leg adjacent to the ball on the ground when he strikes the ball that's the ideal hitting spot didn't quite get it right but he drives it down there Sean tries to steer back in she can't Michael King stopped the ball there in traffic save the goal for now Richie Curran brings, brings it out the open side he the horse race is on now but Bingham Fitzhenry's got too much of a start but Richie Curran's come in cancelled him out Graham man there working hard with it with Sean Sean there just changes the line so she keeps the right of way and Blake Reed's got to concede to play. Sean's going to leave it there for Bingham. Bingham's got no one marking him now but here comes Richie Curran. He says I'll give you one play and then I've got you. Bingham Fitzhenry tries to run it into goal but he's put it wide. The pressure from Richie Curran was just too much. Off the back line we've got here Richie Curran for action blue medal. When the attacking team puts it wide, the defensive team gets a hit from the back line. A little bit similar to AFL, except you play it from where it crosses the line. Blake Reed out in front. He's left it behind. Pete Hambry, though, he'll turn the corner now. Oh, Pete Hambry there. What's he done with He's turned it around the corner, left it for his stepbrother in Bingham. Bingham now tries to run it in towards goal. Richie Curran's got too many smarts. Uses a horse to take him out of the play. Then he goes to the ball. Now he brings it around the corner. Bingham now trying to bring it down the far side. The first footer goes. Next stoppage or if the ball hits the boards. Blake Reed tries to bring it round the corner up here for Richie. Richie's just got to evade the hook. He's not. He's hooked out of the play. Great play from Mike Roberts. He's going to be here for Michael King. Michael King brings it down here. Is he going to get there in time? This is what he's got at Michael King. He's done it once. Can he do it a second time for Action Blue Metal? King, he picks up the ball. Is the hooter going to go or will he stick it through the post? I think he's stuck it through the post just in time. And there goes the hooter. Action Blue Metal. Leading the game 2-1 at the end of the first chucker. Horse person or horsewoman, as like Sean is, and they'll quite often get her to mark up on the best player in their opposition just to make his job or her job as difficult as possible. The ball's into the line out, and Richie Curran, he's the only one that knew where it was. He's looking to come down here, but putting it up for an attacking parade. But who's this? Pete uh, Bingham Fitzhenry, he's read the play the best, trying to get it round to Pete. Pete can't quite get there. Michael King's got the ball going forward once again. Michael King looked pretty, pretty good. Hooked out of the play by Sean, though. It's going to leave it here for Pete Hanbury. Hanbury turns the play around. Now he's trying to set Sean running down the other way. Sean hits away. Blake Reed will get the next play on the near side, but he hasn't got it as well as he'd like. Left here for Richie Curran. Curran just takes a couple of half plays to settle the play. Now Hanbury's come to put the pressure on Richie Curran. Curran tries to bring it around the corner. It wants the teammate fair for the pass. Now now Curran's got another play. King, he's in the middle if he can get it to him. Goes for the centering shot. Can't quite do so. Blake Reed, Sean Barnacle there on tight on the side. Sean's now going to try and set it up to Pete, but she's put it too far inland. Inland, here's Michael King. King, he's read the play the best. Oh, he's hooked out of the play there. Richie Curran shoots for goal. It's a little bit wide at this stage. Sean's going to go down the near side. Her back placed hasn't got the length on it she'd like. Blake Reed. Bingham Fitzhenry working hard for it, sticks in the air looking for a penalty. The umpire says just play on and the action blue medal with Blake Reed will put one on the board and that'll be the score and Bingham Fitzhenry thinks he's very hardly done by. But as we all know when you're playing sport, the man with the whistle is king. Play to the whistle and you're still a chance. You pull up and you don't get it, you're no chance. Here we go, Bingham Fitzhenry just asking umpire Damo Allport why he didn't get what he wants, and Damo just ignores him. Back centre field, ready to roll it in. Every time a goal is scored, we change ends, just to try and take some of the anomalies out of the game. 
3-1 the score in favour of Auction, uh, Action Metal Blue. And it comes. Who's this? Looks to be Mike Roberts had it going forward. But Richie Curran, because of the work that Graham Mann did, took the player out to let Richie Curran go to the ball. Richie now drives it up here looking for Blake. Can't quite do so. Sean though. Sean will be the one with the turning play. Richie Curran tries for the big play. Says she did a U-turn. She hits away. There's no one out here except for Green Shirts and Michael King. Michael King and Bingham Fitzhenry. Michael King, Blake Reed. Blake Reed runs down Bingham Fitzhenry. Changed his line, changed the right of the way, and Blake Reed was still coming down the highway. Just on that right of way. If you haven't been to the follow before, all our rules are designed around the safety of the game. It's safety first for the horses, then the players. So we have a right of way, the line in which the ball is travelling along. That is our right of way. It's like the highway. People on the highway have that right of way. You can only enter it into when it's safely. So look at Richie Curran. He hits it out here, so he's the only one with the right of way. Now he sits it over here for Blake Reed. A little bit more across field than he wanted. Blake Reed sets it up here for Graham Mann. Mann's just left it there. Great play from Sean, because she's going to turn it around for Bingham Fitzhenry. Bingham Fitzhenry now with a chance to bring his side back to within one. Bingham's got plenty of time, so he checks up and sees how much time we've got. And the three goaler puts it through. 3-2 the score, still in favour of Action Metal Blue over FH Polo. Now, well, at one stage you were calling Bingham somebody else, but that's okay. It wouldn't have mattered. So back to the middle again. And uh, as we have a want in polo to change ends after every goal is scored, I'm not entirely sure that is entirely unique to polo, but it's pretty close to being entirely unique to polo. So Bingham releases the ball, pops it up for his teammates again. And again, just keep an eye out always for the various tactics that are being played off the ball. So you should see some interesting developments with with players and they uh they they get pretty passionate out there i can tell you as far as uh they, they can be pestered by people to a point where they start getting a little short fuse but you'll you often see some rivalries developing out there so the ones v4s three v2s is the way the game generally will will play every time the play breaks though they do reform and you would be expected to go to a man who's close to you wouldn't necessarily have to stick to that man so another penalty for has been awarded in favour of FH Polo, FH being Fitzhenry, being Bingham Fitzhenry, so I'm sure he likes to have a Polo team named after him. With him is Sean Barnacle. So Sean's had a, had a good game so far, been very active out there. And as I said, the, so the handicaps of the players, uh, I think minus, minus one is the lowest handicap out there. And, uh, and as I've said, if those guys can make a play nullify a three or a two or a one then of course they're playing up to that next level up so 60 yard penalty bingham fitzhenry players defending in the goal mouth as you can see fitzhenry that's a lovely strong shot up in the air it goes has he got the accuracy not this time you can see the umpire to the right hand side out there with his stick held out to the right so just to let you know as well two umpires on the field and there's a third man somewhere else. So sometimes the umpires disagree that uh, one will blow the whistle and the other one won't necessarily agree that a foul has been committed. Uh, and so they will then appeal to a third man who is uh, positioned somewhere strategically watching the game. And uh, that person then will offer his opinion or her opinion from the sideline. Bingham Fitzhenry with the ball for FH Polo. The score at the moment still 3-2 in favour of Action Metal. Bingham misses and it's left behind. It's going to be Michael King who comes up with the play. Fitzhenry now takes the ball back though, regains possession. Where is the team? Look at them now. They're all facing the wrong way. I'll just to let you know, ladies and gentlemen, that the way this game should be played, when your player who has the... Uh, the, the, the honour of being the best player on the field gets control of the ball, you want to turn yourself around and start heading up the field because you uh, you should be anticipating that ball coming up to you. Um, so Bingham Fitzhenry there just swooping onto the right of way, the line of the ball. Andrew referred to the line of the ball or the right of way uh, a few moments ago. So you just have to imagine that if you're travelling in the direction of the ball with the ball on your right-hand side, just as we're driving down the road, then a player, or a, if a car were to come across in front of you and, and make you veer, change direction, or worse, for example, then 
that would be uh, considered to be a foul. <clears throat> and that's a pretty basic way to describe it. It's very complex, and as you can imagine, the ball's changing direction all the time, and every time the ball changes direction, that line and that right-of-way also changes, but you're allowed to clear the old line, etc., etc., etc. So we do make a bit of fun of the fact that there are eight players out there and two umpires, and I can guarantee you that every single one of them sees the line of the ball differently. So it's very much a matter of, uh, of, uh, of interpreting uh, what they're seeing out there, and of course... When the whistle blows and the umpire makes a decision, uh, it's a very unwise man who decides they want to argue because, of course, in polo, as in lots of other sports now, we also have uh, penalties that can be awarded if you are rude to the umpires. Look at Bingham out there, just having a little bit of a show-off. That's the way Bings. That's a boy. Very impressive, my friend. Did you see what he did there, Andrew? He picked the ball up off the ground and just tapped it around on the end of his stick. That, uh, I have to say that uh, despite the fact that, that I, you know, I, I abhor that sort of showing off, it is actually a, a, a testament to some great skill. So the umpire's having a little bit of a chit-chat, chin-wag, just deciding what the penalty is going to be. And they're throwing the ball down, and we'll see in a moment what the result of that. So the score 3-2 action metal at the moment to the good. And uh, looks like the penalty has been awarded inside the 30-yard line and on the spot so the defending team are going to have to just go back. Bingham's just making his way over to have a little chat with the umpire. You can see that little little tater tate going on over there and uh, so the penalty being taken by I think it was Richie Curran. Took the penalty anyway the ball's through the goal. 4-2 the score and over on the far side in the pink shirt supporting the day is Stuart Gilmore. Right on top of it they are. I hope they can hear the commentary. Hold your hand up Stuart if you can hear the commentary mate. No, he's thrown his hand into the bin. June, can you hear the commentary? Put your hand up if you can. Yes, Stuart can hear it. Which means that Stuart will be able to know that I am going to congratulate him and June for their 51st wedding anniversary today. And that takes precedence over any polo that's going, 51 years. And I have to tell you that, you know, one might say that one's more tolerant than the other, but I reckon they're both equally tolerant of each other. They're magnificent human beings, those two. 51 years of bliss. And I'm not gonna let that go today, Stu. That's gonna be mentioned a number of times, old son. Polo's on, Bingham Fitzhenry puts it through. Four, three. I think you're being very kind to Stewie there, Jim, saying they're equally tolerant of each other. I would have thought June was a lot more tolerant than Stewie. Anyway, we're back centre field. Latter stages of the second chucker. 4-3 four, four, the score to Action Metal Blue. And here we come. Bingham Fitzhenry. He's had a good chucker so far. Looks up. Wants someone to run onto the pass. Sees his brother Pete down there. A great approach shot here. But who's going to be the first to it? Michael King comes up with a back play. Just enough to get it away. Up to his teammate and Graham Mann. They've all left it there in a bit of trouble. Richie Curran tries to bring it round the corner. Does so once, twice. Looks up. He's got no one to pass to though. So he's have to make the half play. He's over the top of it. Left for Graham Mann. Mann says here, Richie, have another go. Because because Richie had missed it, all the defensive players pulled up. Richie Curran now taken by Sean. Sean's just put him over the top of the ball. Left here for Bingham. There goes the first hooter. 30 seconds unless the ball goes out of play or hits the boards. Head away here from Pete Hanbury, but the defensive player back there is Michael King. King looks up, takes the man. Now that'll allow him, his own teammate to go to the ball. Black by Blake Reed into a bit of traffic. Skipped out towards the ball. Pete centers it back in there, but it's into traffic. Bingham picks it up though, looks up to see where his teammates are. There goes the hooter as Bingham was looking for the penalty and that'll end the chucker. Four, three, the score, the halfway mark. And the umpires and the players, they all disagree to how that chucker completed. So you can see Bingham hits Fitzhenry there taking the, the uh, common Argentinian profile, shoulders up around the ears in a shrug of defiance and misunderstanding. It's like, please, please explain to me what's happened here because I reckon I had a shot and that guy was in my way 
And even though he cleared the way, the chucker then ended and I wasn't able to get any advantage from the fact that he was in my way. So Bingham just discussing the rules with the umpire at the moment. And this can go one of two ways, or three ways. Actually, nothing could occur. The umpire could listen to Bingham, which is extremely unlikely. Or the other one is that if Bingham becomes too vocal and uh, dissenting, then you could potentially have an, uh, a, a penalty awarded against him. But uh, entertaining Polo, 4-3 the score in this, this final. What are we at? The, uh, the Bronze Cup final. And uh, the year's 2020. Don't ever forget that. Years do roll by. And in this magnificent setting here in the, uh, the Gold Coast hinterland. Players making their way back onto the field. So don't forget, this is the final of the Bronze Cup. And uh, it is the most, well, near enough the most spectacular venue here in Queensland. I have to say, there's a bit of a, a argument, I suppose, a discussion about Larry Pinter here, but this is truly beautiful here. And uh, players make their way back on 4-3, the score at the moment. Action Metal with the advantage at the moment, four goals to three. So you can actually see the umpires, uh, I, I think they probably went off and had a bit of a chat with the third man. It might be Stuart Gilmore on the far side who is the third man. Um, and uh, they did elect, in fact, to award a penalty to the FH Polo team. So Andrew and I were just discussing that as well. Um, there was a player that was interfering in uh, Bingham Fitzhenry's progress to the ball. Now, had he cleared the way and, and Bingham had time to play, they would have then played on as, a, as an advantage. However, the bell went. Uh, I'm presuming, by the way, that this is what happened. Uh, and so because the bell went, then Bingham then wasn't able to um, take advantage of, of his right to that play. So a penalty has been awarded. Whether I'm right or wrong is uh, about the reason is irrelevant. Uh, it's an open goal. It's on the 30-yard line. You can see the Action Metal team. They're just gathered at the back. They're having a bit of a chat. Bingham's shot is going to be either in or out. And Bingham's shot is in and through it goes. So great play. So they come back to the middle. Four goals all. That's what we like to see. The two teams neck and neck. And we love to see them getting very close at the end as well. Um, just to let you know, if we go into, I think, a draw situation, I do understand they will be playing to a result. I make this up, by the way. I understand that. That's what I understand from these bigger tournaments. Uh, so uh, we presume that if they are drawn at the end, then they will go into extra time and a golden point situation. So ends change once again. Bingham, look at him, big smiley face there. He knows that he has a, um, a conversation with the umpire and on this occasion has... Uh, has uh, succeeded in uh, at least at least uh, the umpires having the conversation. Away we go. It's with Blake Reed at the moment. Go on, team. Run for him. Run for him. Run for him. There's Blake. Pass the ball up for Michael King. And uh, first one to it. Over the top. Great play there by Sean Barnacle to uh, ride Richie Curran out of the play. Richie, though, comes up with the next one now in the green helmet there. And away they go. Come on, guys. Get out in front. Let's keep moving. Polo really should be played in a very positive frame of mind. If you've got a good player with the ball, then ride forward. So you see the four and the one out there. Bingham Fitz, Henry being hard ridden there by um, Graham Mann. And good play from Mann to put the pressure on Bingham Fitz, Henry. There's the shot, though. It's a good one. Just away to the left at the moment by Richie Curran. And it's beaten them over the back line. For all, the score remains in this third chucker of four. So the ball to be brought in again from the back line. It's all on the line. Bingham. And you can see Sean there with Bingham, and they're just deciding. So out to the left here in the middle of the field, you can see. Is that Pete Hanbury with the grey helmet? Bingham still with the ball. He wanted to go left. A little faint, though. He just pretended to hit it. Now makes the backhand shot, and Blake Reed riding the right of way. So the right of way exists if you're coming in the other direction as well so again if you think about your car driving down the road if you're driving down the road and you've got the white line on your right then of course a car can come across or come opposite you in the other direction as long as he doesn't get over onto your side of the road and run into you um so in this particular case bingham missed the ball blake reed was riding his uh, right of way and uh, Bingham turned and went back, and the umpires have judged that uh, in returning to the ball, he impeded the progress of Blake Reed and his right of way. It's bloody convoluted, isn't it, this polo stuff? I'll try to stay away from the rules because it's deadly boring. So that bell, I pre presume, was on the far side of the field, on the other ground, I beg your pardon. And now, 40-yard penalty, open goal again.
Richie hits the ball very well, strikes it nicely through it, goes 5 4 the score. Good strike there from Richie Curran. He is. He does spend a bit of time on his penalty hitting, which all good polo players should do. A lot of them don't spend as much time on their penalty hitting as they should and then wonder why they can't do it. So our two umpires out there, we've seen Damo Allport out there in the last game and the Peter Cook, the one piling it in, he'll be in the uh, main final later this afternoon. Two good mates from the Downs, bowls the ball in. Working underneath there, you can see Bingham Fitzhenry. Pete Hanbury's teammate was in the way there for a little bit. Bingham looks up to see where he's got someone to hit to. Hasn't got anybody to hit to. So he makes the next play. Then he opens up the shoulders. Blake Reed should get to the next play, but it's going to be tight on the board. Richie Curran gets taken across the play by Sean Barnacle. Sean there, big play. She's got it off the boards and going centre field. Richie Curran says, how much time have I got? I've got enough to turn it and come back to it. Break Reed comes across the field of play. The only one heading in that direction. Look at Michael King run for the pass. But Blake Reed brought it back the other way. Now he's too far away from Michael King. Richie Curran comes through. Oh, Bingham Fitzhenry gives him a bump for his trouble. Sean Barnacle, Graham Mann come through. Blake Reed's done a mallet. There goes 150 bucks as Pete Hanbury goes back the other way. Pete Hanbury shoots for goal from a long way out. It's going well wide and it'll probably go out over the back line from behind. So good play there from Michael King. He saw his teammate Blake Reed was going to be the next one to the ball. So he just headed up the field, anticipated the passing play. It didn't come off, but Mike King made the right play. You're watching Richie Curran now, trying to control the ball because he's a teammate down. Hits it up here. Here comes Blake Reed. If Blake's smart, he'll wait there and let Richie Curran hit it to him. But Blake hasn't. He's turned around to come behind him. He should be down there waiting for where this ball landed. But he didn't anticipate Richie Curran taking it down the field. Richie Curran now is going to take it from coast to coast is he no he can't he's pulled up on the beach he's going to leave it there for michael king king he won't miss from that distance out six four the score great play there from richie curran and michael king all but going coast to coast there was richie curran from goal line to goal line but Michael King, as always, always backing up, always looking for that pass. When he's got the chance to look for the pass, he will. If not, he'll pull back in behind. Underrated on the zero goals. Michael Cookie bowls it in. Graham Mann's got it at the front of the line out. Under pressure from Mike Roberts. Mann gets the play. Up there for Bingham Fitzhenry to make the back play. Turns it around there looking for Sean. Blake Reed though, makes the turning play. Kingy was looking for the back play. Blake Reed brings it around the corner. He's got no one out in front though. Graham Mann's pulled in behind him. Needed him to run for the pass. Michael King picks up the ball. Up here to Richie Curran. Now Curran clears the deck to let Kingy go to the play on his own. Now Richie has a play at the ball. Richie Curran now. Look looks to go centre field, can't quite do so Blake Reed comes in, Reed there takes it further forward um, Pies there just waiting to see for the change of line. Richie Curran's back in now. Look at Michael King out there waiting for the pass. Kingy there in the right position for the attacking play. Left or behind is Richie. Richie Curran is he's hooked out of it. Blake Reed tries to run it in towards goal and he's put it through. Out seven goals to four. And he's just called for a bit of gear time. Richie's just needs to adjust some gear, and that being a safety issue, the umpires will once they get back to centre field, they'll give him the time that he wants because it's a gear because it is a gear issue. And that deems to be safety. Well, they're not. They're going to play on now. They've got it. Now they realise it's a gear issue. It was just a broken stick when he broke a stick before. That's not deemed to be a safety issue. So play will continue. But when it becomes a safety issue, an injured horse or a bit of gear that needs adjusting, once the play comes to a neutral position, they'll call time. So Blake, being the gentleman that he is, Sean's had enough of wearing the glove. Blake will thank the opposition for waiting for him. And umpire Peter Cook bowls the ball in. Here we go. 
Bingham Fitzhenry. He just changes that line. See how it says the only one. And did you hear Sean Barnacle? She called hit. And just as she did, Richie Curran came and claimed her. So good play from those two. Look at Michael King and Bingham Fitzhenry. It's fun under there. Bingham Fitzhenry's called on top of the ball. But they're just playing a bit of advantage. Graham Mann hits away up here. But no one there. So Pete Hanbury with the first one to it. Hanbury's back play doesn't go as far as he'd like. Picked up here by Blake Reed. Blake Reed out on the little chestnut. Let's it open down the ground. He's a approach shot towards goals. Hasn't got the run that he'd like. Picks up the bouncing ball. Now he's got to keep that bouncing ball running towards goal and he does. No, it's left there. Left short, but oh, oh, oh. grow man like a thief in the night. Taps it over the goal line and that'll get close to the end of the third chucker with the action medal blue team leading eight goals to four. Talk about big chuckers, Andrew, and that was a big chuck, or well, is a big chucker so far. I think they came into the start of this at four all, and Action Metal putting four on the board in this third chucker. So if FH Polo are going to look to a, uh, a point in time where the momentum swung against them, this would be it. So this third chucker, and again, it's uh, when you come out, and they plan as well, the, the players, they plan which chucker they're going to ride their good horses in and hopefully they can also have a bit of an understanding of when the other teams are going to be playing their better horses and they will do what they can to uh, to nullify that. So at the end of the third, eight for the score and the umpire's whistles are blown. So we might see the players coming back on with a penalty up uh, in advantage of FH Polo. So good stuff so far. I have to say, though, not a great chucker for FH Polo, but a terrific chucker for Action Metal. And for the Queensland Cup Pink Polo Day. And of course the Queensland Gold Cup is being played later. At the moment we are looking at the final of the Bronze Cup. Action Metal versus FH Polo. Eight goals to four. So far the score. Bingham Fitzhenry just coming back onto the field. So we're about to enter into the last chucker. The fourth chucker. The scores at the moment a little unbalanced. Bingham Fitzhenry with an opportunity to change that a little bit. But as you saw in the last chucker with Action Metal scoring four, then the task is clearly not unachievable for FH Polo to return the favour in this particular chucker and uh, potentially to come through as victors at the end. So this is the last chucker, ladies and gentlemen. Four players on each team, all of them desperately wanting the win. Two umpires out there adjudicating, a third man over there, score a time. Keep all these different people and all these amazing horses that are being prepared by so many different people um, and uh, all for us to enjoy this magnificent spectacle. Hundreds and hundreds of people involved and a few bucks as well, I dare say. So you can see the goal defended, so we're on the 60-yard line. That means that Action Metal are clustered in the goal mouth. They normally have a player on the 30-yard line right in the in the way there. That's what they call the, uh, the three. It's only three players out there. Oh, okay. Thanks, Andrew. I was getting a bit carried away there. So we're still waiting on... Who are we waiting on? FH Polo. One, two. Not Sean. Oh, no, bigger part. Action Metal. Oh, there's only two of them out there. No, there's three. So just uh, what would normally happen or very frequently will happen for these types of penalties is the attacking team will have a player on each goal post. Goal post um, and uh, they, they're positioned there in order to redirect the ball if it's going wide of the post. Then hopefully they can stop it before it goes over the back line and direct it through. And of course the defending team in the goal mouth. So the umpires have called play. So all of the players now on the field. You can see Blake Reed there in that position of... Ultimately, everyone wants to be there right in front of the ball as it's coming at them. Bingham again, up in the air. Very good-looking shot. He's got the direction as well. Back to the middle, they're going to come. Oh, Everybody's arms in the air to say goal is scored. It is 5-8 now. And is this uh, a resurgence that we're seeing from these guys? Early days, of course. And that was a penalty that was taken due to uh, an infringement at the end of the last chucker. So we're going to see what happens with the horsepower now. And clearly the... Uh, Action Metal team came out on some pretty good ponies in the last chucker, enabled them to get that advantage on the scoreboard, and now we're going to see. So here we go. Seven minutes left, so seven minutes of playing time. When the whistle blows, the clock stops, 
and uh, during normal play in each different chucker. Here comes Bingham. Come on, boys. Let's see you put another one on the board and make it exciting. Bingham lofts that one away. It goes out in front, going back in defence. Is Richie Curran. Bingham's hit a big one, and it's too big and just not quite accurate enough, and it goes over the back line. So unfortunate for FH Polo, fortunate for Action Metal. Blake Reed just over the ball he goes, leaves it for Richie Curran. Uh, Curran. Richie steers the ball out to the right-hand side. This is Sean who comes in to make her presence felt there. The shot, though, the release from Richie Curran comes up for Blake Reed, but in there is Bingham, Fitzhenry. Fitzhenry makes the backhand shot, turns it around quickly around they come. Looks like Curran's going to be the first one to it. This is what it's all about is the horsepower. How quickly can you get back around? And around they come again. Blake, it is this time. Blake Reed now with the ball going out. Look out. Here comes Kingy as well. Bingham is there. Did I hear a whistle? I heard a whistle. And again, uh, you saw, you can see Mike King here out in front. He saw that play happening and, uh, and immediately took advantage of the, uh, of the play and was away out in front. So the penalty has been awarded, I think. We're going to have a roll in. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm not entirely sure who was most disadvantaged there, but uh, roll in, away we go, straight into the line out, straight through it goes, it's fixed, Henry Viss with Blake, and it comes out, Sean's in there, but coming away is Richie Curran with the ball, eight goals to five, the score at the moment, Curran just takes it away, look at Mike Reed taking Sean out of the play, this is great play from Mike Reed. look at all these blue shirts everywhere, it's still at the moment with Richie Curran, straightens up, next one to it is going to be Blake Reed. it's all the blue shirts of Action Medal at the moment, blue shirt still, and it's still with... Curran and Curran finishes it off and it's nine goals to five and the resurgence has been stamped on pretty firmly. Great play there from Richie Curran but probably the best play made in that sequence of play was the play made by Mike King to take the only defensive player out that let Richie Curran go to goal at his own pace without any worry from the defensive players at all. So great play from Mike King to take the defensive player out. That's what teammates always do. Look to how they can help their teammates out, not just score the goals. You're looking at Graham Mann. He's the only one going in that direction. Hits it down there, but Bingham Fitzhenry's going to pick him up at the next play. He's left it behind. Mike King says, here, Graham, have another go at this. Now Mike King there, he's going to call Graham Mann out of it. Now Graham Mann goes down on the near side, which lets Bingham Fitzhenry come in. He makes a back play into a bit of traffic, though. First one round's going to be Mike Roberts. Roberts hooked out of it by... Blake Reed, Blake Reed there's just got to concede the next play though. Rather than giving away the penalty, Bingham Fitzhenry, Mike King, umpire's whistle wins the day. That's the advantage. We saw going the other way that last goal, ladies and gentlemen. You saw Mike King take the defensive player out and let Richie Curran go to goal. Going the other way, Graham Mann got white ball fever. He went to the ball rather than keeping the defensive player out of the play. Then when he missed the ball, the defensive player got to it. Should have kept him out. Up here by Bingham Fitzhenry. Up here for Mike Roberts. Roberts, though, just infringed on that right of way because the ball went over the top of Richie Curran's head. Richie Curran says, I'm going to establish myself on that line of the ball, on the right of way. That way no one else can come in. Curran now looks up to see where he is. Look what are his teammates doing? He's got someone down there. He drives it down there looking for Graham Mann to run onto the pass. Graham Mann both taken out of the play. That'll let Pete Hanbury go to the back play. Does so nicely. Brings it around the corner. Mike King will be the first one to it. He's going to try and hit a back play up to Richie Curran. And that is a great play from Michael King. Set up Richie Curran. Richie Curran, though, can't control the next play. Barn goes for the sideline. Doesn't get hold of it the way she'd like. Richie Curran's going to be left with the ball. He's just keeping it behind Sean so he, she can't get a play at it. But the players behind are now catching him. Now he's got to run it in towards goal. He's a little bit wide and Bingham for Henry. Clears the day for FH Polo. Going to rely on Mike Roberts to get it further down the field. He can't. Bingham Fitzhenry picks it up on the near side. Blake Reed's going to have to concede the play rather than giving away the penalty. He does so. Bingham now looks up to the umpire and the umpire says, you've got the ball. What else do you want? Now Bingham Fitzhenry, Blake Reed. Bingham checks out of the play. Let, let's Blake go to the play. Mike Roberts tries to make the play. Can't. Sean, though, she'll be the next one to it. And she takes it across the field of play. Richie Curran there tries to meet her at the play. She's just got enough on it for Pete Hanbury to pick it up. Pete Hanbury, Richie Curran. Pete Hanbury checked. 
and that allows Richie Curran to drop onto the line. Richie Curran now says, here you go, Blake Reed. Go around the corner and hit this one. Look at Michael King taking Sean out of the play again. Now he rides for the pass. The pass has cut a little bit too far infield. Michael King will still be the next one to the play. Kingy will go under the pony's neck. A great centering shot from Kingy, but Mike Roberts will be the next one to it. He's left it behind for King. King now with a chance to put it further in. My own man didn't keep his defensive player out, and Pete Hanbury gets a play. Mike Roberts gets a play, but not enough, and Richie Curran puts it through, and that'll take them out 10-5 to action medal. Might be a stretch too far to see FH Polo come down back from this one. There's only about two minutes left. The scoreboard clock is only an indication. There's an official clock there with June, June Gilmore under the red 10 on the far side. Umpire Peter Cook prepares to bowl the ball in. Does so. Who's got it? Blake Reed just controls the line, flicks it out. You hear Richie Curran? Back, back, back. Rich hits it out there to Richie Curran. Richie Curran goes down the field. Trying to set up Mike King. Mike King and Bingham Fitzhenry. Mike King gets the better of this play. Bingham's going to try and cut him off at the pass. Mike King's come to put the pressure on him. Bingham there right on the goal line. Backs it out of harm's way for now. Trying to set up someone. He has Pete Hambry. Hambry there. Tries to get the ball going. But Richie Curran comes through on the near side. Takes the ball forward to give himself some time. Left it there for Sean. Sean now under pressure from Graham Mann. Mann now waits for the ball. Leave it there for Bingham Fitzhenry. Bingham says, here's Sean. Have a run at that. But Graham Mann's read the play well, but the ball didn't have enough length on it for him to get the play. Sean now, he wants Pete to go, but Pete pulled up and waited for the play. Now he's back behind the play. They need him down the front. Bingham Fitzhenry's got the ball going forward, but he's under pressure from Richie Cohn. Bingham on the near side, shoots from goal from a long way out. And it looks to be going down into the back line wide. And I think it's going to go over the back line, is it? Yes, it has. Skull umpire says Richie Curran just tees it up for himself. So I plays the call from umpire Damien Orpott. Richie Curran says, here, Blake, go for a run down the open side. Long drive from Richie up here for Blake Reed. Goes down on the near side, does so. Goes straight past Pete Hambry. He hasn't got the horse speed to go with Blake Reed. Reed now over halfway. I don't think he realises how much time he's got. Now he looks up over the shoulder. He sees he's got plenty. Blake Reed chips it down towards goal. But there goes the hooter. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. Our Bronze Cup winners are action medal blue. Graham Mann, Mike King, Blake Reed and Richie Curran.